One last thing I want to talk about uh, band levels. You have two ways of looking at, at, a, at the spectrum of an acoustic source. You may look at the full detailed spectrum that is called the narrow band spectrum or you can group data by frequency bands uh, of different uh, widths. Um, the most widely used bands, band types are called octave bands. Uh, an octave in music corresponds to the distance between two notes of, of equal name, so from a C to a C, from a, an A to an A, and it corresponds to a doubling of frequency. So the octave bands have been standardized and they are defined by their lowest frequency, highest frequency and center frequency. And to go from the, frequency, the center frequency of one band to the center frequency of the next, you just have to double the frequency. Well, for different historical reasons in the standard, it's not for lowest frequency exactly a doubling, but pr in principle, that's, that's the idea. Now, if you, and therefore you can define the bands and uh, calculate one level associated to each band by summing the intensity of the band and then calculating the, the level. Sometimes octave bands are too large because they go, for instance, from 1000 to 2000 or from 2000 to 4000, which is indeed a very uh, broad uh, frequency range. So you can have smaller bands and we defined third octave bands. There are three octave bands within one octave band and so to go from one center frequency to the next you need a geometrical progression and so the factor is the cubic root of two. And if you want to go to have even narrower bands you can take 12 um, uh, octave bands uh, where the ratio is the 12th root of 2, which corresponds to uh, an equal semitone in music, for instance, from Do, from C to C sharp, or uh, from uh, E to F. Having defined uh, octave, third octave, and 12th octave bands, I can define now two final topic, the concept of white noise and the concept of pink noise. White noise is a type of noise that is often used in measurements and that characterizes an ideal sound that contains all frequency with this exactly the same level. Of course, it's never exact, but... Uh, and because the, the narrow band spectrum is flat, and because the width of the successive bands increases, well, if you look at the narrow band spectrum of a white noise, you have a flat curve. But if you look at the octave band spectrum of a white noise, you have an increasing level because there is more and more energy in the successive bands, simply because they are wider. And so, in a way, you know, the uh, area of the rectangle, rectangle under the curve within a given octave band increases by a factor of two each time. So a white noise has a flat uh, narrow band noise and has a steadily increasing octave band uh, spectrum. Um, the counterpart of that, the opposite of that, is the, white, the pink noise. The pink noise is designed with a decreasing uh, octave band level so that you have a constant uh, uh, octave band level. So these are two complementary noise and some uh, standards request the test to be done with white noise or with pink noise and it's important to know uh, that definition. Uh,